check that it's square next that's done, the last plate of course I now have to make this able to revolve in the plate so that nut steps slightly back with the locking nut similar on the other side so that the spindle can turn in the shaft decided to make my own board pretty rigid and I'm just cutting out now a two bladed shutter so whoever worked on this has cut back this blade because these sections really weren't necessary this was big enough to cover the pull down of the film and then they've also of course matched that by cutting back these blades a little um, they've thought that the shutter is now physically out of balance so they've added some solder to these two and in fact that's taken it the other way the balance is now the other way so they started to drill holes to compensate a little but it's still definitely weighted too much towards those two blades which won't worry us because we're not using this and what in fact I've done centerpiece not yet added I've made a cardboard shutter which um, replicates what would have been the original shape that's not the adapted shape but the original shape of that blade as you can see and then because we've got a two bladed shutter not a three I've made the other blade exactly the same now this is a little over efficient um, as whoever it was who cut back the original shutter realised you don't need quite so much here so eventually I will trim that back um, but I just want to make sure that we've got enough cover to start with even if I get things slightly out of line so I'll leave it like that for the moment and uh, fit the centre section get that on the machine I think the thing to do then is actually run a film through just see what it looks like on the screen with the standard shutter before we worry about adding the colour shutter the motor is now bolted into place and I've actually got it running at the moment you can't really see that because it's so well balanced you can probably hear it and I'm controlling it with one of my cheap Chinese speed controllers Now you'll notice that throbbing noise and that's fairly typical, that hunting noise is fairly typical of these cheap speed controllers so there is a variation, a slight variation in the speed but from experience I know that providing is not too much, it, it's not evident on the screen so as long as at the low part of the throb we're getting 32 frames per second very slight, that very slight increase the other end is not going to cause a problem. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not surprised, it's a little bit esoteric, but essentially slight variation in the speed as it runs shouldn't make any difference to us. So this is very low vibration. I can feel the motor vibrating, but it's barely being transmitted to the cabinet. Um, I haven't mounted the actual motor on rubber just bolted but what I'm going to do is put some rubber feet underneath the bottom of the cabinet but there's really no not enough vibration for us to cause any problems with the picture there of course we'll see what happens when we get the mechanism running and everything and the belts all weaving around but so far so good well that's looking promising gotta fit the centerpiece but um just with that slipped on there, looks quite respectable. I think that's going to do the job. We need the back side towards the projector so that the um, straight, the light coming through when the frame is obscured doesn't bounce around all over the walls of the room, illuminating the room. Um, this is less important but to make it look a bit more professional um, I might paint that black or that sometimes causes distortion so 
um, probably stick some black paper over the side of the shutter when it's finally cut to shape. So that's now with the centre part of the spindle fitted. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, checking it out, this rocket stopped, frames being projected, that's the non-flick blade, the second blade, and the cover blade should now be coming into position about now. Sprocket starts turning, the cover blade's still there. The cover blade's out of the way, so the sprocket should have stopped, which it has pretty much. So, flick blade, pitch is covered, sprocket starts turning, blade uncovered, sprocket stopped. I think it's a fraction out, maybe, but I'll explain how we can adjust that. On the original shutter, the holes that uh, allow the screws to come through to fit the shutter to the centrepiece are elongated, like kidney shapes, as you can see, to allow for some adjustment. It's not possible to roll the whole shutter on the shaft because there's a keying on the shaft, so you have to have a little bit of adjustment. When I've made the replica, I've made ordinary round holes, so it's a little bit off. So we'll need to maybe make some kidney shaped holes to be able to move it very slightly before tightening the screws up. But um, that's easy enough. <laughs>